We are in Genesis 44. Genesis chapter 44. Welcome to Family Bible Time. We're in Mark 14 as well. Let's pray. Lord, we praise and thank you for another opportunity to study your word. We pray your blessing upon it, Lord. Help us, we pray. Forgive us our sins. Help us to learn from you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Then he commanded the steward of his house, who's he? We're talking about Joseph, aren't we? Fill the men's sacks with food as much as they can carry and put each man's money in the mouth of his sack and put my cup, the silver cup, in the mouth of the sack of the youngest with his money for the grain And he did as Joseph told him. As soon as the morning was light, the men were sent away with their donkeys. They had gone only a short distance from the city. Now Joseph said to his steward, Up, follow after the men. When you overtake them, say to them, Why have you repaid evil for good? Is it not from this that my Lord drinks? And by this that he practices divination? You have done evil in doing this. When he overtook them, he spoke to them these words. They said to him, Why does my Lord speak such words as these? Far be it from your servants to do such a thing. Behold, the money that we found in the mouths of our sacks, we brought back to you from the land of Canaan. How then could we steal silver or gold from your Lord's house? Whichever of your servants is found with it shall die, and we also will be my Lord's servants. Now, those were, them, them were, were rash words, weren't they? <laughs> they were rash words. It's like Jephthah's vow. Do you remember Jephthah's vow? You, you, you'll remember it when we get to it, but it's kind of awkward for daughters. Um, I'm going to sacrifice the first Just thing that comes can sacrifice to the Lord the first thing that comes through my door that, that greets me when I get home rather it's a silly thing to vow isn't it? anyway that was Jephthah's vow um, he said let it be as you say he who is found with it shall be my servant and the rest of you shall be innocent did you notice how he instantly toned it down <laughs> very clever Um which is a good lesson in and of itself, isn't it? Don't accept people's rash promises. If you accept the promise, that I guess you could say they're bound by their own promise, aren't they? But if you don't accept the promise when it's it's made, um, you you this was this was clever stuff on the part of um, the steward of Joseph's house. Verse 11, then each man quickly lowered his sack to the ground and each man opened his sack and he searched beginning with the eldest and ending with the youngest and the cup was found in Benjamin's sack. Then they tore their clothes and every man loaded his donkey and they returned to the city. When Judah and his brothers came to Joseph's house, he was still there. They fell before him to the ground. Joseph said to them, What deed is this that you have done? Do you not know that a man like me can indeed practice divination? And Judah said, What shall we say to my Lord? What shall we speak? Or how can we clear ourselves? God has found out the guilty of your, the guilt of your servants. Behold, we are my Lord's servants, both we and also But both we and he also in whose hand the cup has been found. So now they're trying to play down their own promise, aren't they? (laughs) We're your servants, not not he has to die. Um, But this is interesting, isn't it? Verse 16, this is a different Judah. Mm. Back back in chapter 38, remember Judah and Tamar? Mm -hmm. And how Judah went off and he's hard-hearted and this is that Judah, but God has been working in Judah, hasn't he? God has found out the guilt of your servants. This is a man who's been troubled in his conscience and he's interpreting 
what's happening as providence. Anyway, verse 17. But he said, far be it from me that I should do so. Only the man in whose hand the cup was found shall be my servant. But as for you, go up in peace to your father. Then Judah went up to him and said, O oh my Lord, please let your servant speak a word in my Lord's ears, and let not your anger burn against um, your servant, for you are like Pharaoh himself. My Lord asked, Um, thank you yeah my lord asked his servants saying have you a father or a brother and we said to my lord we have a father and an old man and a young brother a child of his old age his brother is dead and he alone is left of his mother's children and of his and his father loves him then you said to your servants bring him down to me that i may set my eyes on him we said to my Lord, the boy cannot leave his father, for if he should leave his father, he, his father would die. Then you said to your servants, unless you bring, unless your youngest brother comes down with you, you shall not see my face again. When we went back to your servant, my father, we told him the words of my Lord. And when our father said, go again and buy us a little food, we said, we cannot go down. If, if our youngest brother goes with us, then... We will go down, for we cannot see the man's face unless our youngest brother is with us. Then your servant, my father, said to us, You know that my wife bore me two sons. One left me, and I said, Surely he has been torn to pieces, and I have never seen him since. If you take this one also from me, and harm happens to him, you will bring down my grey hairs in evil to shale. Now, therefore, as soon as I come now, therefore, as soon as I come to, to your servant, my father, and the boy is not with us, then as his life is bound up in the boy's life, as, as soon as he sees that the boy is not with us, he will die. And your servants will bring down the grey hairs of your servant, our father, with sorrow to shale. For your servant became a pledge of safety for the boy to my father, saying, If I do not bring him back, then I shall bear the blame before my father all my life. Now, therefore, please let your servant remain instead of the boy as a servant for my Lord, and let the boy go back with his brothers. For how can I go back to my father if the boy is not with me? I fear to see the evil that would find my father. Hmm. Wow. That's a different Judah, isn't it? This is a Judah who's not thinking about himself and his own comfort and pleasure. He's thinking about his father and he's thinking about Benjamin. And he's even willing to be a, what's the word? Substitute. He's even willing to take Benjamin's place, isn't he? He said, let me become a servant instead. And that's a bit like what Christ has done, isn't it? Christ said, let me take the punishment instead of, mm. wow, me. <laughs> I wonder how Benjamin felt at this moment. Mm. Probably felt like his older brother loved him for the first time in his life. Thank <laughs> you. They hadn't, they hadn't been very good to Joseph. I don't suppose they were very different towards Benjamin, although Benjamin probably didn't mention any dreams that he had. <laughs> anyway, Mark chapter 14. It was now two days before the Passover and the Feast of Unleavened Bread, and the chief priests and the scribes were seeking how to arrest him by stealth and kill him. For they said, Not during the feast, lest there be an uproar from the people. And while he was at Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, as he was reclining at table, a woman came with an alabaster flask of ointment, of pure nard, very costly. And she broke the flask and poured it over his head. Why did she break the flask? Well, it's just the way they were made, so they had... 
like a thin neck to these flasks and you would break the flask to be able to pour it out. There were some who said to themselves indignantly, why was this ointment wasted like that? For this ointment could have been sold for more than 300 denarii. Now, how much is it one denarius? A day's wage. A day's wage for a labourer. So 300 denarii is like the best part of a <coughs> year, isn't it? 360 would be a year, so 300 is, is a lot, isn't it? It could have been sold for that and given to the poor, and they scolded her. It's interesting, isn't it? We're told elsewhere that it was Judas who started saying that, but here we've got the others joining in. Anyway... But Jesus said, leave her alone. Why do you trouble her? She's done a beautiful th thing to me. For you always have the poor with you. And when, whenever you want, you can do good for them. But you will not always have me. She has done what she could. She has anointed my body beforehand for burial. Now, that's interesting, isn't it? Because do you think perhaps this woman understood what was going to happen to Jesus. Jesus kept saying, I'm going up to Jerusalem and I'm going to be handed over to the Gentile handed over to the Gentiles and killed and crucified well crucified and on the third day I'll rise again. We forgot, don't we? It's too late now. But um maybe the, the disciples didn't understand, did they? But maybe this woman had had actually understood and Judas Iscariot, who was one of the twelve, went to the chief priests in order to betray him to them. That's tragic, isn't it? Judas, at the very moment when he's looking at what's going on and saying, why this waste? The money could, be, could have been sold and given to the poor. We know from John's Gospel that he was a thief and he had his hand in the money bag. So Judas is thinking, it could have been given to the poor. But he's thinking, I could have had some of that. And now when he's seeing Jesus and this woman's, he's saying, this woman's anointing him and Jesus is saying, she's anointing me for my burial. And Judas is like, this isn't, this isn't the kingdom now. I'm not going to be rich and be on a throne with the others. And then he decides to go and betray Jesus. Verse 11, And when they, that's the chief priests, heard it, they were glad and promised to give him money. And he sought an opportunity to betray him. And on the first day of unleavened bread, when they sacrificed the Passover lamb, his disciples said to him, "What? Where will you have us go and prepare for you to eat the Passover? And he sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the city, and a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him. And wherever he enters, say to the master of the house, Teacher, the, the teacher says, Where is my guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? And he will show you a, a large upper room, furnished and ready for and ready. There, prepare for us. And the disciples set out and went to the city and found it just as he had told them, and they prepared the Passover. When it was evening, he came with the twelve. As they were reclining at table and eating, Jesus said, Truly, I say to you, one of you will betray me, who is one who is eating with me. And they began to be sorrowful and to say to him, One after another, Is it I? He said to them, It is one of the twelve, one who is dipping bread into the dish with me. For the Son of Man goes as it is written of him, but woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for that man if he would not been born. And as they were eating, he took bread, and after blessing it, broke it and gave it to them, saying, 
and said, Take, this is my body. And he took a cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, and they all drank of it. And he said to them, This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many. Truly I say to you, I will not drink again of the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. And when they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. And Jesus said to them, You will all fall away. For it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep will be scattered. But after I am raised up, I will go before you to Galilee. Peter said to him, Even if they all fall away, I will not. And Jesus said to him, Truly, I tell you, this very night, before the rooster crows twice, you will deny me three times. But he said emphatically, If I must die with you, I will not deny you. And they all said the same. And they went to a place called Gethsemane. And he said to his disciples, Sit here while I pray. And he took with him Peter and James and John and began to be greatly distressed and troubled. And he said to them, My soul is very sorrowful, even to death. Remain here and watch. And going a little farther, he fell on the ground and prayed that if it were possible, the hour might pass from him. And he said, Abba, Father, all things are possible for you. Remove this cup from me, yet not what I will, but what you will. And he came and found them sleeping and said to Peter, Simon, are you asleep? Could you not watch one hour? Now this is interesting, isn't it? Because Peter had just been saying, if ever anyone denies you, if everyone else denies you, I will never deny you. It's like, I'm Mr. Super Christian, follower of Jesus. And Jesus has said, watch and pray. And yet he said, could you not watch one hour? Watch and pray that you may not enter into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak, isn't it? The flesh is weak. That's our problem, isn't it? We can say, oh, I want to do this, but the flesh is weak. We need the spirit, don't we? The Holy Spirit to be able to serve God truly. The power comes from him. Verse 39. And he went away and prayed, saying the same words. And again he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were very heavy, and they did not know what to answer him. And he came a third time and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? It's enough. The hour has come. The Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. And immediately, while he was still speaking, Judas came, one of the twelve, and with him a crowd with swords and clubs from the chief priests and the scribes and the elders. Now the betrayer had given them a sign, saying, The one I, ki the one I will kiss is the man. Seize him and lead him away under guard. And when he came, he went up to him at once and said, Rabbi, and he kissed him, and they laid hands on him and seized him. Think of it, hands that Jesus had created were now grabbing him. But one of those who stood by drew his sword and struck the servant of the high priest and cut off his ear. I think he was trying to cut off his head, probably, wasn't he? But he missed. And Jesus said to them, Have you come out as against a robber with swords and clubs to capture me? Day after day I was with you in the temple, teaching, and you did not seize me, but let the scriptures be fulfilled. And they all left him and fled. 
And a young man followed him with nothing but a linen cloth about his body, and they seized him, but he left the linen cloth and ran away naked. And a lot of people say that young man was probably Mark. And they led Jesus to the high priest, and all the chief priests and the elders and the scribes came together. Peter had followed him at a distance, right into the courtyard of the high priest. And he was sitting with the guards and warming himself at the fire. Now the chief priests and the whole council were seeking testimony against Jesus to put him to death. But they found none. For many bore false witness against him, but their testimony did not agree. And some stood up and bore false witness against him, saying, We heard him say, I will destroy this temple that is made with hands, and in three days I will build another not made with hands. Yet even about this their testimony did not agree. And the high priest stood up in the midst and asked Jesus, Have you no answer to make? What is it that these men testify against you? But he remained silent and made no answer. Again the high priest asked him, Are you the Christ, the Son of the Blessed? And Jesus said, I am. I am. Those are the words, aren't they? The name of God. But it's also an absolute confession that he is the Messiah. Are you the Messiah, the Son of the Blessed? I'm not saying the Son of God. They didn't like saying the name God. And Jesus said, I am, and you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of power and coming with the clouds of heaven. Now that's a direct, direct reference to Daniel chapter 7. You need to read Daniel. You're not following a whole series of sermons in Daniel just recently in our church you need to read go and read now Daniel chapter 7 and you'll see the son of man coming with the clouds of heaven anyway and the high priest tore his garments and said what further witnesses do we need you've heard his blasphemy what is your decision and they all condemned him as deserving death And some began to spit on him and to cover his face and to strike him, saying to him, Prophesy! And the guards received him with blows. And as Peter was below in the courtyard, one of the servant girls of the high priest came and seeing Peter warming himself, she looked at him and said, You also were with the Nazarene, Jesus? But he denied it, saying, I neither know or not understand what you mean. And he went out into the gateway, and the rooster crowed. And the servant girl saw him and began to say to the bystanders, This man is one of them. But again he denied it. And after a little while the bystanders said to Peter, Certainly you are one of them. For you're a Galilean. But he began to invoke a curse on himself and to swear, I do not know this man of whom you speak. And immediately the rooster crowed a second time. And Peter remembered how Jesus had said to him, Before the rooster crows twice, you will deny me three times. And he broke down and wept. Lord, we well, we don't really know what to say in, in response to that because in, in this kind of denial and this kind of self-confidence and this kind of fear and failure we don't just see Peter but we see ourselves Lord we see 
our cowardice, we see our fear. We see that all the disciples abandoned you at that point and we've got no no way of thinking that we would be any different, Lord. Everything that you do for us, you do for us by the power of the Holy Spirit. And so we pray, come and strengthen us. Help us to become the men that these men became, the women who were willing to go and and die rather than deny you. Help us to become full of faith and faithfulness to the end. And we just thank you that you were willing, even though you had no one supporting you. You were willing to go through with it in order to save us. Lord, thank you. Thank you that you went to that cross. And thank you that you didn't turn away from it. And all these many opportunities you had that you could have turned back. We praise you that you loved us and determined to save us by going to the cross. Lord, we love you. We thank you. We pray that we might live for you today. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Well, look at that, we're out of time. <laughs> well, maybe we should stop. <laughs> we're done for today. Oh, boy, this is heavy stuff, isn't it? This is so, so much that could be said, but it feels almost irreverent to throw in trite comments. So there we are. It's been more of a reading today than a, a study, but I hope it was, it was, it was a much as blessing to you as it was to us. Mm -hmm. God bless you. We'll see you again tomorrow.